This is Valley News Live at noon. Welcome to Valley News Live at noon. Taking a look at our sky cam right now. The snow is falling lightly as it continues to come down out there, and that means that roads are still icy. But the big story of the week is the dropping temperature. Let's get right over to meteorologist Jim Gash for a first look at our weather, Jim. That's right, Bobby. We have a bunch of first alert weather days this week as if we didn't have enough last week. And these are from Tuesday all the way into Friday as that shot of Arctic air is moving in. Now, things are already cold, but the dangerous cold is going to start settling in tonight and into uh, tomorrow. We're going to see those temperatures hit dangerously cold levels and those wind chills even colder. And by Friday, most of the country will see temperatures below freezing. Even places like Florida and even down into Mexico could see some frost on the ground there. Now, taking a look at our sky cam here, we can see, like Bobby said, where there is some snow flying around out there. And it's pretty light, and we have that light snow all the way from Fargo up into Grand Forks, points northward, and some snow southeast of Lakes Country. And zooming in on this little band that we saw, pretty hefty snow, but it's pretty fast moving, so not a lot in the way of accumulation. And visibility is all already starting to take a hit. And that zero degree line is hanging right over our area, a bit colder out west than it is in the east. Minot sitting at negative eight. And those wind chills even colder, and that's the story of the day. Those wind chills are only going to decrease as we move throughout the day. Here in Fargo, we're going to continue seeing that snow until the mid-afternoon, and after that, temperatures will fall back below zero. So, Bobby, I'll have more information about how long this cold will last coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Jim, thank you so much. I have a lot of Arctic news oh, to yes. go over pretty soon. Jim, thank you. Well, nine people are recovering after a harrowing incident near Fergus Falls in Ottertail County is being credited with the rescue. Jim Moss says that he was on his way home from Wompton last night when he spotted a van in the ditch along Highway 210 between Fox Home and Fergus Falls. He says the vehicle had slid on glare ice and tipped over in a ditch. Moss says that he had the driver use windshield wipers to unlock the doors and then was able to get the rear hatch open. He pulled seven people, including children, out of the back. Some of them were pinned. They were, you know, three high, you know, they were pinned underneath each other. And so we finally we got all those out, but then grandma was pinned underneath mom up in the front. Moss put the children in his vehicle with his wife to stay warm, adding that several of them were only wearing slippers on their feet. Fergus Fire arrived and broke the sunroof to remove the other victims. Moss says one girl was complaining of leg pain, but he believes everyone is okay. Well, new at noon, an apartment building had to be evacuated in the middle of the night after police say someone was firing gunshots. The Ottertail County SWAT team, Sheriff's Office, and several other agencies responded to the apartment building in Pelican Rapids just before 3 a.m. Saturday. Deputies found a bullet hole when they arrived and say there was an odor of gunpowder. 38-year-old Jordan Pierce had a rifle, but deputies say he went back into his apartment when he saw law enforcement. People living there were evacuated to the Pelican Rapids High School. Pierce eventually surrendered and was arrested for reckless discharge of a firearm, property damage, and carrying a firearm while under the influence of alcohol. No one was hurt. And there's still no word yet on what caused a fire that killed a dog and destroyed a family home in North Fargo over the weekend. This happened just before noon on Saturday in a neighborhood near Edgewood of Golf Course. Crews found flames coming from the mobile home but had to get out when they found the floor burned out. One dog died of smoke inhalation and the home is a total loss at $50,000. Now the battalion chief says that icy roads slowed their response a bit, but they were able to quickly find the nearest fire hydrant because someone had shoveled out the snow around it. Snow bearing fire hydrants is a problem fire crews run into all too often brought on by heavy snow and street plowing processes. That's why fire departments are asking people to adopt hydrants in their neighborhood through the winter and clear about three feet of snow from all around the fire plug. They say that saves a valuable time for firefighters in an emergency. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we are. Yes. For winter wonderland. 
And that right there is U.S. Air Force veteran Mark Lindquist emerging from his tent at Broadway Square in downtown Fargo yesterday when the wind chill was about 20 below zero. He's sleeping outside through New Year's to raise awareness on how to help Ukrainians and to collect winter gear and monetary donations for soldiers. Last night he was at Whale of the Wash on 13th Avenue. Lindquist tells U.S. military veterans around the world are joining in, and he says a Navy vet from D.C. is launching his own sleep out challenge. And two of Lindquist's friends, one from Canada and the other from Chicago, are on their way to Fargo to join in. And we have more information on how to donate at valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story. And on the U.S. southern border, the humanitarian crisis is growing. Thousands of migrants are crossing into El Paso, Texas each day. So many, in fact, that the city's mayor has declared a state of emergency. The scheduled end of a pandemic era policy called Title 42 this week is expected to make things even worse. The rule was used to deter more than two and a half million migrants from crossing. Well, if you're shipping holiday gifts, today is the deadline for the Postal Service's priority mail and the 23rd is the deadline for Priority Express if you want it there by Christmas. FedEx is shipping by the 20th for Express Saver and for UPS December 20th for Three Day Select, the 21st for Second Day Air, and the 22nd for Next Day Air. The Jewish Center, Jewish Center of North Dakota is hosting a public menorah lighting tonight on the second night of the eight-day Festival of Lights for Hanukkah. A nine-foot-tall menorah will be lit on the lawn of the Fargo Public Library, and the event features children's activities, a Hanukkah game show, and refreshments. Complimentary menorahs and candles will be distributed for people to light at home. Well, Fargo's Gladys Ray Shelter is in serious need of winter gear and gloves and mittens are at the top of the list. They're asking you to consider donating new or used items to the Downtown Engagement Center between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. or at the Gladys Ray Shelter on 1st Avenue South after 5 p.m. And Wednesday is Homeless Memorial Day and community members are invited to participate in a five-block walk of remembrance in downtown Fargo starting at Broadway Square at 6.30 with a memorial service to follow at First Lutheran Church. Well, coming up at noon, the January 6th committee will meet publicly for the final time today, voting to adopt their report and to make criminal referrals to the Justice Department after an 18-month investigation. But next, meteorologist Jim Gash has what we need to know to expect for this week and today when it comes to our weather.